One thing that former foreign minister Suraki Satyan Thai uh, said to Thai PBS World he's, is that he said that the dialogue has to happen. Yeah. I mean, we, we hear this sentence before though. I mean, the dialogues that I mean, this issue really needs to be solved, and the only way is to have a dialogue, to have a discussion, and find a way out. Yeah, they used to say is the war and with talk or negotiations. So the former foreign minister Surakiet urged the Thai military, which is known for its close relationships with Myanmar junta leaders, to take the lead in helping to find ways to end the violence engulfing Myanmar. Suruki has said that the situation in Myanmar has deteriorated to the point that it has overruled the principle of non-interference of ASEAN. He added that with the scale of violence we are witnessing, we have gone beyond the point already. So he told Thai PBS World in an interview that an additional spatial channel is needed to convince the conflicting parties to sit down for a dialogue. He pointed out the long history of close relationships between the military leaderships of Thailand and Myanmar, putting Thailand in the best position to play a mediating role to end the current violence in the country. So again, he is currently chairman of the Asian Peace and Reconciliation Council, or AAPRC, which has issued a statement calling for a peaceful dialogue among all conflicting parties in Myanmar and a release of all political leaders detained since the military coup on February 1st. He said there is a high level of trust and mutual respect between Thai and Myanmar military leaders. And this special relationship is Thailand's unique asset that should be utilized to help find a peaceful solution to the crisis in Myanmar. He admitted that, however, with anti-military protests escalating and casualties mounting, the prospects of a peaceful end to the ongoing crisis in Myanmar are fast dimming, especially after some of the armed ethnic groups have declared they are siding with pro-democracy demonstrators against the military regime. Now let's take a listen at some of the uh, some part of the interview he did with us. Uh, but we have to send a message to our friend in mm -hmm. Myanmar as a member of the ASEAN family that uh, the only way out of this crisis is to have a dialogue, a negotiation between the Tatmado, mm -hmm. the military, and also the parties to the conflict, NLD, Osan Suji, and probably other democracy advocates. Uh, in my view, um, violence will not subside if ASEAN doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So I think that ASEAN and diplomacy should be given a chance to play an important role. Uh, Thailand is in a very good position to support, mm -hmm. but I think Thailand is, is, has the best position to do quiet diplomacy via the Thai military. Mm -hmm. I think the Thai military is very suitable to uh, work on the, the quiet diplomacy uh, in order to um, convince uh, Myanmar military mm -hmm. to uh, come to the negotiating table. So he was talking about quiet diplomacy. Is that, I assume, if it's quiet diplomacy, it will be something that's not showing to the media just yet? Right. There has to be something behind a closed door? So who knows? Maybe something's going on right now. Right. And the anti-military protesters in Myanmar also already urged the international community to invoke the so-called responsibility to protect or R2P doctrine to end the violence in the country. The doctrine endorsed by UN member states in 2005, this R2P requires a sovereign government to protect its population from mass atrocity crimes and human rights violations. Failure to do so would grant the international community the legal warrant to intervene. So in another word, the R2P is an invitation from the outside actors, from the other countries to come in and do something.